So YMTA is uh, short for Integrated Multitrophic Aquaculture, um, and we've kind of adapted it to a aquaponics viewpoint, so still Integrated Multitrophic Aquaponics. The benefits that it offers over traditional aquaculture, though, are that you get more outputs with the same input because what you're doing is using multiple trophic levels of organisms. So in, in our system, we have uh, yellow perch, you know, your quintessential Lake Erie, Ohio, Friday night fish fry species. We've got paper shell crayfish, they being detritivores feed on the uneaten food and feces. And then we have tomatoes that utilize that nitrogen that's produced from the organisms themselves, and so they kind of act as a biological filter. Because there's no water released from the system, there's no nutrient pollution from the system, and particularly here in the Lake Erie watershed, you know, water quality is a really important consideration, and not adding to our surface runoff pollution problem is a really big plus. People seem to like this idea. Things like having a lower nutrient output uh, back out into the environment, um, a more green, more sustainable, more sort of socially environmentally friendly or socially acceptable environmentally friendly uh, product. One of the big problems in aquaculture can be if various species of dissolved nitrogen get too high, they can become toxic to the fish. And I was like, well, how does it work for you? And he's like, oh, well, the levels seem to be doing okay. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how the, you know, nitrogen mass balance works out then to actually make that happen. Because there are a number of systems like this where they feel like they have to put in an extra step, essentially, that it promotes the growth of nitrifiers. But in this system, it seemed to be doing okay. And so we thought that meant good things about the balance of fish and the other plants, but we wanted to measure it and actually figure out what was going where and, and how that was working, especially without an extra step just designed for nitrifiers. And so it was very exciting then to see the numbers work out and see that it, it did keep everything in balance. So the system starts like most aquaculture systems do with fish that are fed. Uh, the onion food and the feces then get collected and fed to our crayfish. The water from all of the tanks then goes into a raceway where we have our plants and the roots are just submerged underwater. The plants are supported above by plastic discs and the water continues to recirculate throughout the system. So the plants are continuously taking up the nitrogen and the organisms are producing it. And simply put, that's all it is, is the organisms kind of working together to utilize the byproducts of each other. So we were trying to figure out all the different forms of nitrogen. How fast does one get converted to another? You know, in a mass balance system, you have an in and an out, but we were interested in all the arrows in the middle of how does it move from one form to another. We were able to put numbers on all the arrows and figure out how the nitrogen gets moved around. And um, really the rates of nitrification were crazy high. And that's a good thing because when it goes all the way to nitrate, that's a form that's not toxic to anybody. Yeah, I mean, the initial idea was to almost develop a sort of plug and play model where if you had X number of gallons of water and certain amount of tomato plants, how many of each organism along the chain could you feasibly grow? We've had incredible growth of the tomatoes, uh, incredible growth of the fish, and so it's feasible. We also learned a lot about how it works and you know what it takes to make it more efficient. We were very lucky in this facility and fortunate to be able to set up a, a demo here um, and it sort of changed the way that I think about potentially expanding systems like this across the Midwest and that perhaps other partnerships with existing infrastructure might be a way forward for us. We very much demonstrated that it is very feasible to develop a system that is simple to operate and doesn't require a lot of technical expertise. Sustainable fisheries and aquaculture are one of the major arms of our, our NOAA granted mission for Sea Grant. And the ability to have sustainable food and food production in general is a very important issue in the U.S. and becoming less reliant on foreign fish sources is important and not overfishing the resources that we have is incredibly important. And so being able to develop sustainable uh, fisheries and sustainable aquaculture um, is an important part of NOAA's mission. And here in the Midwest, we don't have a lot of aquaculture. And so being able to develop and pilot a system that has the potential to um, be used more widely across the Midwest is very exciting.